हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू स्किल्स बिल्ड ट्रेनिंग यूट्यूब चैनल माय सेल्फ मोहम्मद जुबैर एंड दिस चैनल इज ऑल अबाउट शोइंग यू हाउ टू बिकम एन आई टी प्रो रेरी फैस्ट सो द टॉपिक ऑफ टूडे इज वीडियो इज यू बन टू वर्सेज लिनेक्स मिंट विच इज द बेटर लिनेक्स डिस्ट्रो सो विदाउट एनी फर्दर अड्यू लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड In this video I'll compare both Linux distribution and I will try to find out that which Linux distribution is better than the other one I will discuss some of the main features and some of the common one between both these Linux distribution so that we can have an idea that which one is better on the basis of same feature First of all I will talk about the Ubuntu and I will talk about its feature then i will talk about the linux mint and at the end i will conclude my video on the basis of some facts and some features so let's start with ubuntu well if we talk about the installation process ubuntu's installer is one of the easiest installer because we do not have to do anything manually we just need to use our mouse and everything gets done on its own when ubuntu was created in 2004 installing linux itself was considered a huge task but ubuntu installer allowed the people to install ubuntu using the gui and that is why it got a lot of popularity and in most of the cases ubuntu can identify a windows installed on your system and allows you to dual boot ubuntu and windows in a matter of clicks and you can also install updates and third party codecs while installing ubuntu and that's an added advantage now if i talk about the hardware requirements ubuntu needs 4 gigabytes of ram and 25 gigabytes of hard drive space for installation and for smooth experience now let's talk about the interface of ubuntu as you can see on your screen we have some applications docked on the left side of our screen and down here we have a button to show our all applications if i click on it here you can see we have these applications if i go back and now if i press my super key here you can see we have this small window appeared on the right side and this is the desktop window you can have as many desktop as you want in ubuntu to have one more desktop here First of all you need to open any of your application let's say i will open my files here and now if i press my super key here i will drag it and here you can see we have one more small window appeared here so i will just drop it into the second one and here you can see we have the third window appeared on its own so you can have many desktop in your ubuntu and you can use them in the middle on top we have our date and time and if i click on it here we have all the notifications and on the right side on top we have some widgets like we have volume then we have our wifi then we have our different other widgets and now let's talk about the software ubuntu uses the free and open source software mostly it comes with pre installed applications like libreoffice and firefox browser etc here you can see we have firefox browser as default and for the mail we have thunderbird and here we have our rhythm box and if i go to my show applications menu here you can see we have libreoffice for our documents and then here we have software update for all the updates related to our applications and our packages and here we have ubuntu software so if we talk about the software installation this ubuntu software repository gets used for the software installation from here we can download and install tons of free and open source software and application in our system and here we have different categories related to our software so you can go to any categories as per your need and you can download or you can look for a particular software or application to explore any of your application just go to your explorer and here it is and here i will just search for vlc yes we do have vlc available and it's already installed 
And now if you talk about the official spins, there are 10 different official flavors of Ubuntu which are listed on the official website of Ubuntu. At the moment, we are using the Genome desktop, but we also have the alternative that have their default desktop environment like KDE, LXDE, XFCE, Mate and Myth TV. There are also specialized distribution including at Ubuntu for the education community and Ubuntu Studio for multimedia production. There is also Ubuntu Kaolin for Chinese user. So we have a lot of spins in Ubuntu which we can use. If we talk about the distributions, Ubuntu is based on Debian and as we know, Debian is one of the biggest community project and one of the most respected project in the free software world. So if I say that Ubuntu gets used by most of the user in the Linux community, then it wouldn't be wrong. Now let's talk about the release cycle. Ubuntu has two versions. First one is regular release and second one is long term support which is also known as LTS release. In regular release, it gets released at interval of every six months and it is supported for the nine months. And for the LTS release, it comes at an interval of two years and it is supported for five years. And regular releases brings new features, new software versions, while the LTS release holds on to the older version. And that makes it a great choice for people who do not like frequent changes and prefer stability. So they can go with LTS release for that aspect. Now I will open my terminal here and here I'll open my top. And here you can see at the moment our Ubuntu is using almost 1005 megabytes of memory. Why I have shown you, I will talk about this later. So just keep in mind that our Ubuntu is using almost 1000 megabytes of our memory. I will just close this one. Now I will open my browser and I will open the community of Ubuntu. So these are the two community forums of Ubuntu. This one is Ubuntu forums and this one is Ask Ubuntu. So you can post your any problem or you can find the solution of your any problem from these two communities. And these are the maturest community if we talk about the Linux distribution. And here you can see different questions have been posted and different answers have been given by different people. So I will just close this one. And that was all about the Ubuntu. And now let's talk about the Linux Mint. If we talk about the installation process, there is not much difference in the installation experience of Linux Mint, just like the Ubuntu. Both use the Ubiquiti installer and the experience is quite similar. And both Ubuntu and Linux Mint offers the support for UEFI. Means just like the Ubuntu, the installation process of Linux Mint is very easy and you can install Linux Mint with the help of a GUI. And if I talk about the hardware requirements, 2 GB of RAM and 20 GB of disk space is needed to install Linux Mint. But 4 GB of RAM is recommended for comfortable and smooth usage. Now let's talk about the software. Ubuntu and Linux Mint both offer free and open source software. But the only difference is in Linux Mint we get more number of applications as pre-installed as compared to the Ubuntu. If I go to my menu, here you can see we have a lot of applications as pre-installed and we have all of them as categorized. Here you can see in terms of graphics, we have three applications. Then for internet, we have five. Then for office, we have LibreOffice and we have a whole collection of LibreOffice. In Ubuntu, we got only three of the applications from the LibreOffice. And down here, same goes for other categories as well. If we talk about the software installation, Linux Mint also offer Mint Software Manager, and it is also responsible for the updates, which is usually mistaken as a system tool instead of an app store. Both stores provide you with ton of open source software for you to download and use. Like Ubuntu offers you a lot of open source softwares. Same goes for Linux Mint. 
you can download and install a lot of free and open source softwares and application so if i search here for software and here you can see we have software manager and software source so i'll go to my software manager so this is the software repository of linux mint and from here you can download and install a lot of softwares which are open and open source and same like ubuntu we have categories of softwares and application here as well so you can go to any category and you can download a particular software so i will just close this one now and now if we talk about the base distribution linux mint is based on ubuntu and that is based on debian and if we talk about the release cycle linux mint uses the lts version of ubuntu as a base and as we know lts receives five years of support and security updates compared to the only ninth month of the bleeding edge version because in rolling release we get the support for only nine months so the consequences is that the age of the base for linux mint can be up to two years and namely the frequency in which a new lts release for ubuntu is delivered so now i will open my terminal and in my terminal i will open my or i will run my top command and here it is here you can see we have different processes which are running and these are the process ids and these are the cpu and memory usage which are being getting used by every process and this is the memory which is being used by linux mint at the moment and as you can see it is about 600 megabytes if you remember when we talked about ubuntu ubuntu was using almost 1000 megabytes but linux mint is using 600 megabytes at the moment now if i talk about the factor on the basis of which i can decide whether ubuntu is better or linux mint is better there are some factors which can decide this first one is memory usage as i have already told you and shown you that ubuntu was using more memory than linux mint is using at the moment so in this case linux mint comes as a winner if i talk about the user interface linux mint interface resembles the windows interface as you can see we have some applications and our start menu button docked on the bottom and same goes for windows in windows we have start button here in linux mint we have our application button here or menu button and we also have some of the application dock at the bottom and on the right bottom side we have our date battery status volume and same goes in window so people who are coming from windows to the linux community they will find a linux mint much more resembling and much more easier to understand because it is quite similar to the windows and ubuntu is not as easy and not as smooth as linux mint so that is why in this regard linux mint is again the winner linux mint also has the community but it is not as matured as ubuntu this is the community for linux mint it is not as matured as ubuntu last thing which is pre-installed software linux mint comes with a lot of pre-installed software Linux Mint has some of the important application installed by default such as Java, Flash and Codex. On the other hand, in Ubuntu, we have limited number of pre-installed applications. But it is not like we cannot have same applications on Ubuntu as we have on Linux Mint. We can easily install these applications in Ubuntu as well. But we are talking about the pre-installed software and application here. So that was all about the Linux Mint and Ubuntu and we have also seen that on which factor Linux Mint is way ahead than Ubuntu. Only one aspect was greater in Ubuntu than the Linux Mint and that was the community support. Ubuntu had the major community but on all the other factors Linux Mint was way ahead than Ubuntu. So we can conclude that Linux Mint is a better choice than Ubuntu because it offers more flexibility, have more features and it also requires a less number of hardware resources and it performs better on older machines as well. So I hope now you must have a better idea that which one is better for you and with which one you should go. With that, we got to the end of today's video. 
please leave a like and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon along with it and if you have something to ask please leave a comment below we will get back to you as soon as possible till the next video take care